Oh. Charlie, I'm enjoying this so much. A few quiet moments. But you seem intent upon ruining. Well, I don't see how they could find out anything. Are you intimating that Kingsfield threw the case? I not only listen when others speak, I listen when I speak. Yes, sir. What has this got to do with Charles Kingsfield? I was hoping you could tell me. What is it supposed to tell me? Think payoff. The study of law is something new and unfamiliar to most of you. Unlike any other schooling that you have ever known before. First years are hard years, much more than we know. But good friends to love us, we'll feel every blow. Stay open to all things, unknown and new. yourselves the law, but I train your minds. You come in here with a skull full of mush, and if you survive, you leave thinking like a lawyer. to be an interesting assignment. It's that word interesting that bothers me. It scares me to death. Well, what do you suppose he's going to pull on us? We might as well relax. There's no way about guessing Kingsfield. The Kingsfield life is a trial. Yeah, he's the prosecutor. Hey, how would you like to go around in a go-kart like that? Mm. Take a look at it. I guess we have a VIP here today. Yeah, Supreme Court justice, at least. in the back seat. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. He's human, isn't he? Did you get that idea? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Bill. <laughs> Ludwig, Morton, and Briscoe, the last of the depositions. And what about Griswold? He's meeting us for lunch. Very well, then. I have all I need. I'll give you my opinion in the morning. No need to rush things, Charlie. After all, the firm is paying you by the hour. About the scholarships. Is Lodestone going to continue them? As long as you wish. I was young and angry. And very, very lucky. So love finds Charlie Kingsfield. <laughs> <laughs> now, the way I figure there can only be one is is having an affair. Oh. Kingsfield has a secret love life. <laughs> so his secret lady love picks him up on campus in a limousine in broad daylight. <laughs> some secret. Now, why don't you three just hang over some nice backyard fence and then gossip your heads off? Oh, come on, love. And you'd have to admit it's rather unusual. I mean, we've never even seen Kingsfield with a lady before. How about Mrs. Nottingham? Sit on the pad in the skirt where you get it. Listen, how are you guys doing? You need anything? Mm -mm. Well, look, it's a pretty slow night. I think I can get off early. How about a study session? Why? Well, I thought we'd prepare for that surprise King Show's gonna lay on us tomorrow. Put his heart. <laughs> Not while I'm eating. Please. <laughs> the sanctity of the law is the cornerstone of this or any other civilization. However, no civilization can thrive without a strong sense of morality and ethics, which you will be relieved to know, brings me to your next assignment. Cases, actual cases, which reflect the two issues I have just mentioned. You will form teams and argue both the plaintiff's case and the defendant's case. Members of study groups may, of course, continue to work as a team. Now, although these cases have already been tried, I shall expect vigor, imagination, 
fresh approaches. Who knows, your presentation could result in a reversal of the court's original findings. Such a circumstance, though hardly probable, would clearly merit the highest possible grade. I notice a Cheshire cat look on a number of your faces. Let me warn you, I will guarantee a failing grade to any group which submits the ordinary and the overused. Cox versus Dow Chemical. Randolph versus Eastman Kodak. Dawson versus Bell Telephone and others of that kidney. This assignment may bore you. I do not intend to let it bore me. I shall expect your submissions on Wednesday. Okay? All right, thanks. Come on, will you? Somebody else free beer? Something? I heard of elephant. Well, there's never going to be any room in the staff. We better get moving. Well, we'll have to squeeze in there somehow. Right now, it's the only game in town for us. Oh, God. <laughs> It hasn't been dried to death? Impossible. Well, Kingsfield's been teaching here for 25 years. He's heard them all. All right, I've decided to go for the smaller cases way back, like when Kingsfield was young. Around the Civil War? Exactly. Anderson, could you please put this book away for me? Anderson, are you studying anatomy or law? <laughs> I just thought you'd be great for the track team. Hey, I think I found it. Yes, I swear he'll buy this. This is the case. The Lodestone Company versus Winters. 357 Fed, second 258. Hart's getting us all the details. Everybody was following me around. Okay, but what's so important about it? Yeah, a company sues a guy over patent right to an invention and they won. Big deal. But there was no appeal. Don't you understand? Appeal is pro forma in a case like this. The loser always tries to upset the findings of the court to get a new trial. And this guy, uh, what's his name? Winters. Yeah, he didn't? Exactly. Well, maybe he figured he was fighting a lost cause. Yeah, but his lawyer wouldn't. Take it all the way up to the Supreme Court. What has he got to lose? Ford, I'm with you. Everybody else in class is going to take an old case and retry it. I think we should do something different. File an appeal. Right on Logan. <laughs> but on what grounds? We find them. Dig. Oh, my aching head. Oh, come on, Belle. You know how Kingsfield detests anything that's easy. Tell me. And remember, we have to plead both sides of the case. We're going to find out something about it first, huh? Hart. Did you find it? Yeah. There's some job getting these reference books over here. Half the class knows we're up to something good. I almost got mugged. So you have a chance to check the case? Yeah. Well, should we do it? No. Why not? Uh, Lodestone Company versus Samuel A. Winters, 357, blah, 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 blah. April 25th, 1947, blah, 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 blah. Come on, will you, Hart? Attorney of record for the Lodestone Company, Thomas Matson. Let's hear it for old Tom Matson, huh? Well, he won, didn't he? 
Attorney of record for Samuel A. Winters, Charles W. Kingsfield, Jr. Come on, Hart. It's just another law case, a matter of public record. It's not that simple. Don't you understand? Kingsfield lost the case. Oh, I understand, all right. What difference does that make? Clarence Darrow even lost a few cases. <laughs> He's not teaching us contracts. Well, I think we should try it. But suppose we do find grounds for an appeal. Then what? We show up Kingsfield. And if we can't come up with grounds for an appeal? He said, I told you so, and we're in the toilet. Gentlemen, it's Wednesday. We're on our way to class. Now, we've got to make up our mind about that case. Are we going to do Lodestone versus Winters or not? Good case. It fits the criteria. I say we do it. Bell? I wish it was Tuesday. Anderson? Excuse me for being practical. Do we have another case? No, he probably won't let us do it anyhow. But you understand what I'm saying? Sure. Gentlemen and ladies, I shall now entertain your submissions. Those that I find illuminating, intriguing, will be tried orally. For the rest, I will accept written arguments. Now then, I presume you're all prepared. Mr. Gagarin. Sir, our study group would like to retry Lipton versus Lipton, lower court in Cambridge. I'm quite familiar with the case, Mr. Gagarin, written, Mr. Mallison. Markell Electric versus Hoffman, 1959, Lower Court, Buffalo, New York. Very well, written, uh, Mr. Simmons. Diopolis versus Diopolis, 1961, Lower Court. Mr. Simmons, I have lived intimately with the entire Diopolis family for at least 15 classes, written. Is there no one in the class who will show the slightest spark of originality? Ah, Mr. Hart. Lodestone Company versus Winters. We cannot hear you, Mr. Hart. L Lodestone versus Winters. Lodestone. Yes, sir, 1947. Yes, yes, I'm aware of it. And you are speaking for your entire study group? Uh, yes, sir, I am. It's a fairly obscure case. I am most intrigued by your choice. And you and your study group will make an oral presentation, Mr. Hart. Well, the sky didn't fall. Not a word, not even a change of expression. How do you read him, Hart? I don't. He only allowed two other oral presentations. That's a good sign. Mm -hmm. He could be setting us up. Maybe he forgot he was even involved with the case. That man never forgets anything about any case. Well, that's, we gotta get organized. Plaintiff, defendant. Right, find out who does what. To who? Whom? Well, one thing's for sure. If we don't do this right, it'll be Kingsfield doing it to us. Hello, Mrs. Peters, please. Yes, Margaret. Yes. No. No, Charles. Yes. Margaret, I know this is late notice, but are you free to dine with me tonight? I see. I'm sorry. Well, tomorrow night? It's just as good. Yes. I think you'd be interested. The ghosts of the past are rising. Okay, now we're all here. Let's get started. Right, I'm ready. <laughs> Can you imagine the look on Kingfield's face if we find grounds for appeal that he missed? <laughs> what? Or do you have it in for him? What are you talking about? Everybody else go that way? Are you sore about something, Hart? This is just another assignment. That's all it is. So? So I'm afraid you think there's more at stake here than the rest of us. Hart. I'm just trying to do the best I can. Okay, okay. Let's just try to remember this group is responsible for both sides of this case. Either side looks lousy, we all get downgraded. Okay, now how do we split it up? Any way you want. Only make me an assistant strictly on grounds of cowardice. Well, I think that Hart and Ford should take the leads. Okay. Which side do you want, Ford? Well, I'd prefer Kingsfield. I, I mean, uh, Winters, the defendant. 
You mean Kingsfield. All right, all right. Let's not make an issue out of this. Lodestone, the plaintiff. Guilty to defense? Yes. More ways than one. How about assistance? Well, since I seem to have all the best of it, I'll take Bell. All right, Bell? Yeah. You two losers willing to back me up? Absolutely. Go with the underdog. Kingsfield already lost the case. I can't do much worse. Well, I guess that about settles it. There's a lot of work to do. I'm going to get going. Remember, Ford, it's just an assignment. Yes, Logan. And no secrets, okay, Ford? Of course. See you around. Hey, Ford, what, what do you mean you'll take me just because you have the best of it? <laughs> Late hit, Bell. <laughs> Ford! All right, Counselor, what's your pleasure? To unload this case. Well, you know, the usual. Background, trial transcripts, we have to find witnesses. Not likely after 30 years. And find out why there wasn't an appeal. Well, I think we should investigate the law firm that Kingsfield worked for. Why go to Weldon Trouble when he's right here? Daniel, my boy, haven't you heard about the lion's den? Oh, good afternoon, Mr. Hart. Uh, Mrs. Nottingham, I, uh, I know I don't have an appointment to see Professor Kingsfield. I know he's a very busy man. I also know that... You could give me an appointment at 2 o'clock on Tuesday, February 31st. Professor, but this is Mr. very Hart is here. important. Yes, sir. Please, I promise I'll never ask you to break the rules for me again, but just this once, could you ask him if he could see me? You may go in, Mr. Hart. I don't understand if I don't see you. Professor is waiting, Mr. Hart. Mr. Hart? Come in, come in, Mr. Hart. What can I do for you? Mr. Hart? No, it's about the Lodestone Winters case. Well, I presumed it was. I'm, uh, I'm representing Mr. Winters. Well, I trust you will fare better than I did. I sure hope so, sir. Uh, I mean... I understand. If you have come to me for help, Mr. Hart, the answer is no. As the judge at this hearing, I shall be scrupulously impartial. Uh, yes, sir, but uh, an attorney is allowed to question anyone connected with a case. In contract law, that is correct. Uh, well, as Mr. Winter's attorney, I'd like to ask you a question. Very well. Um, can you tell me, sir, why you didn't file for appeal? As Mr. Winter's attorney, why don't you find out? But you just said, sir, that in contract law, an attorney may... There are exceptions. Do you wish me to cite precedents? No, sir. There may not have been grounds for an appeal. I've thought of that. Or well, there may. We're starting to look for them. There you are. That's your answer. Search, dig, work. Your client, your very best effort. And who knows, you may succeed where I failed. Thank you, sir. I'm sorry I wasted your time. I hope I haven't wasted yours. Good day, Mr. Hart. Oh. Charlie, I'm enjoying this so much. A few quiet moments. But you seem intent upon ruining. I only call you that in private. Now, you know that. It's affection, Charles. Very well, but only on birthdays and holidays. Now, tell about the ghosts. You don't think I asked you to dinner, especially to talk about that, do you? Of course I do. You remember the other day in the car, we discussed the Lodestone Company and the scholarships? Well, that was the first spectral appearance, to be followed shortly by another, when certain of my students selected the Lodestone versus Winters case for a special assignment. Oh, no. A truly supernatural occurrence. What kind of an assignment? Troublesome one. They attempted the appeal which I refused to make. Why, you rule that class with an iron hand. You could have stopped that. Oh, I 
wasn't expecting it. I was there to explain it. Well, I don't see how they could find out anything. This particular study group is rather exceptional. James Hart, the young man who is representing Winters, has the makings of a superb attorney. Who is going to represent Lodestone? A certain Franklin Ford III. <laughs> Frank's boy in law Oh, we are getting on. Both of them are eager, talented, and persistent. They'll dig to the very bottom to prepare their case. I wouldn't wonder if one or another didn't track you down pretty soon. What do you want me to do? Be discreet. Don't you ever get thirsty? Had a beer at the dorm. Oh. So what did Kingsfield tell you? Nothing. He didn't give you any reasons at all? Oh, well, just a lecture. Ah, uh, you are the attorney, young man. Yeah, that's the one. My sympathy. So I'll have to go to the firm Kingsfield worked for. Hopkins, Talbot, and Workman. Oh, young Charles started at the top. Hopkins and Talbot are dead. Workman's retired. And a woman named Margaret Peters runs the firm now. Margaret Peters? She's a friend of my father's. You're kidding. No. Want me to call, have him put in a good word? No, that's fine. Thanks. Okay. Stay with it, son. Hey, hold it, Ford. Where have you been? At Ernie's, talking to Hart. Well, if it doesn't interfere with your social life, I could use some help. <laughs> your job is to do the research. Mine is to present the case. I don't research. You don't present. <sighs> okay. What do you want me to do? Check this over. We are. I'll never get any sleep. <laughs> what is it? History of the Lodestone Company, only. Now it's called Allied Industries. What's a conglomerate? Uh, yeah, it started out with uh, Lodestone. Well, all we are interested in is Lodestone versus winners. Anything that happened after that has nothing to do with... Do with what? Look at this, Bell. It's a form letter for some kind of annual meeting. Oh, not the letter. The list of the board of directors. Charles W. Kingsfield. Less than two and a half years after he lost the Winters case. And then didn't appeal. So? So doesn't that tell you anything? What's it supposed to tell me? Think, Bell. Think payoff. And you will find, when you begin the actual practice of law, that contracts depend not only on the content of the written agreement, but also on the intent of the parties involved. Be fully aware beyond your analysis, your interpretation, and your presentation of any case, that your ability to ascertain and evaluate intent can decide victory or defeat. I trust you are all making progress in your special assignment. I shall expect to hear the oral presentations at the beginning of the week. Same feeling I did, that Kingsfield was talking directly to us. To me, I'm sure. Only I can't figure the message. Hey, Logan, are you coming? Yes, I'm coming. I'll meet you guys later. Okay. How's it going, Hart? Oh, I feel like I'm spinning my wheels. There's something going on. I can sense it, I just can't grasp it. Mm. You talked to Margaret Peters? No, I'm on my way to see her now. I guess you're all set. Open and shut, as far as I'm concerned. Mm. Okay. 
I'll see you. All right. Okay. What do you say? Who? Hard. You were talking to him. You told him what we found, didn't you? No. Ford, he has to know. No, he doesn't. Hey, look, we're a team. You should have told him. It has nothing to do with the case. It's got everything to do with the case. Bell, it is ex post facto. It does not concern us. So once and for all, shut up. It's not a very extraordinary case, Mr. Hart. The Lodestone Company discharged Winters for what they considered very good cause. Shortly after that, he filed for a patent for one of his inventions. Lodestone sued, claiming he had developed the invention while he was still in their employ, and therefore the patent belonged to the company, Lodestone One. You make it sound very simple. Well, I told you it wasn't a very extraordinary case, Mr. Hart. Now, how can I help you? Uh, well, as I mentioned over the phone, I'm studying contracts under Professor Kingsfield. I was his law clerk more years ago than I care to admit. Don't let him bulldoze you. Remember, under that rough exterior beats a heart of solid stone. I know. Well, if he was anything like he is in class now... Only the bud. Now, I imagine he's in full flower. And if you repeat that, I'll deny it. <laughs> I won't. Uh, Mrs. Peters, I'm in trouble. Just because you can't win a case that he lost? Oh, I can't imagine Kingfield ever having lost a case, and I certainly don't expect to top him. Well, everyone loses a case now and then, Mr. Hart. Of course. But would it be asking too much to let me see your files? Hasn't your professor told you? Files are confidential, Mr. Hart. Oh, of course. However... We do keep news clippings on microfilm. Would, uh, would that help you at all? Um, well, uh, what I'm really trying to find out is why Professor Kingsfield didn't appeal the verdict. I see. Well, I was very young in the firm at the time, and uh, it was Charles' decision. It was Professor Kingsfield's decision. So, would you like to see the microfilm now. I guess it would help. My secretary will show them to you. She's... Maybe what I should really do now is have a long talk with Mr. Winters himself. Well, as I understand it, Mr. Winters died oh, about a year ago. Oh. Well, thank you very much for seeing me, Mrs. Peters. Mr. Hart. Studying contract under Charles Kingsfield will put you well ahead of other law school graduates. Don't disrupt that. Thanks again. Goodbye. Okay, this is what I came up with last night. It's on page 251. I mean, it was so obvious that we almost skipped right over it. Did you find it? Mm. All right, here it says, time where human imagination is concerned cannot be measured. Now, in Pine versus Westinghouse, a case very similar to ours, the appeal was granted on grounds that the inventor can have what is called an inspirational flash at almost any time. Yes, I noticed that myself. So? So Lodestone contended that they discharged Winters only 60 days before he filed a patent on the shock absorber he invented. However, he could have had the inspirational flash at any time. So? Precedent, Bell. Why didn't Kingsfield use it to make an appeal? Mm, maybe he didn't think it was strong enough. Come on, any lawyer would have used half of that to push a case. Well, Kingsfield must have known what he was doing. <clears throat> Something wrong, Bell? I'm tired of working on this case. What about our other assignments? Sorry, I'm late. I was downtown talking to Mrs. Peters. Well, how did it go? Well, she seemed really nice, only I got the feeling she was, well, walking on eggs. What do you mean by that? No, it's just a feeling. Yeah, but was she cooperative? Well, yes and no. I mean, well, she answered all the questions. She just didn't say anything. Maybe 
she didn't know anything. Well, she knew Kingsfield pretty well. Slip one, started to call him Charles. <laughs> she must have known him well. And another thing, it was her first case. She assisted Kingsfield. Well, maybe it was just too long ago for her to remember any details. Oh, come on, Logan. Nobody forgets the details of their first case. Unless they want to. What's that mean? Do you tell them or do I? In our research, Belle and I ran across a little something. What little something? What, are you holding out on us? Now, it was a long time after the case was settled. Two and a half years isn't that long. Belle. Kingswood was appointed to the board of directors of Lodestone. Big deal. He's on a dozen boards. Absolutely. It has nothing to do with this assignment. It is no big deal. Well, then why are you making it one? I'm not. Belle is. Wait a minute. Are you intimating that Kingsfield threw the case? I am not intimating anything. You're saying they bought him off. Facts, Hart. I am dealing with facts. You're saying they bought him. Listen, let's get one thing straight. If it's true, I didn't buy him. Your Mr. Hart has a very vivid imagination. The entire study group is quite exceptional. And young. Young enough to jump to conclusions if they make the connection. Which they almost certainly will. Charlie, are you going that to... That name again, and this time not in affection. More. In concern, I am worried. I am your friend. Yeah, I know, I know. You know, I often wonder what would have happened if I hadn't introduced you to Fred Peters. We would have destroyed one another. Yeah, but we would have done it with style. <laughs> Oh, Charles, what are you going to do about Mr. Hart? What can I do? I can't stop him. Not now. I guess not. <sighs> I wish none of it had happened. You know, I think if it happened again today, I'd do exactly the same thing. I tried you earlier, but I guess you were still at Ernie's. Yeah, I worked a little late. Can we talk? Yeah. Listen, I wasn't going to spring any surprises on you. I didn't say anything because as I know how much Kingsfield means to you. And I didn't want you to find out he had clay feet. I don't believe it myself. It is just not in the man's character to do anything immoral, illegal. Still looks lousy. On the surface. Look, why don't we just drop the whole thing? Go to Kingsfield and say we want to present a new case. It's too late. I wish I'd never even seen that damned letter. Have you still got it? And the other material on Lodestone? Bell has it. Company history, financial reports, mergers. Mind if I look it over? Of course not. But what? Don't tell me there's more. No. I just wish you'd listen to me and drop the case. I can't. Don't you understand, Ford? I have to find out one way or another. Why? Why? But why does anyone have to find out anything? Because, look, I love this man. I respect him tremendously. But if he really did take the bribe? I'd still feel the same way.
Excuse me, Professor Kingsfield. I, I know I shouldn't bother you accepting your offers. Mr. Oh, Hard, I have a class in five minutes, and so do you. It's about lodestone winners, our assignment. Very well. So you said that we shouldn't deal strictly with the law, but with morals and ethics, too. I not only listen when others speak, I listen when I speak. Yes, sir. Well, we found precedent for the appeal, sir, but the morality, the, the ethics of the case, well... As long as they are present. So then I have to ask why you didn't file for appeal. Can I remind you that you are now the attorney for the defendant? Come in. So what happened? You oversleep? Kingsfield kept looking at that empty chair behind me. I think he knows why I wasn't there. It's a lodestone company. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this background material Ford lent me. Any help yet? All I know is that the company makes millions of dollars. Richter. What? Richter scholarships. Must be about 20 of them here. Yeah, Anderson, the company gives away money, too. Scholarships, grants, endowments. No, it's the name, Richter. What about it? I swear I saw it before. Yesterday or the day before. That's it. I was checking all the patents issued in the early 1940s. I'll be right back. Stay right here. What's that all about? Scholarships to colleges all over the country. Mostly engineering schools, I saw. Well, that makes sense. That's what Lowestone's all about. You haven't changed your mind, have you? About what? Dropping this case. I'm willing, Hart. I don't care what kind of a grade I get. Thanks, Ford. But no. I told you I saw that name before. Here it is. Richter. Hans Richter. He applied for a patent on some doohickey he invented in 1945. But the point is, he was turned down. And now they have scholarships in his name. Hmm. This can't just be a mere coincidence. Oh, uh, no way. Well, gentlemen, I suggest we do a little research on Mr. Richter. Hold it, Ford. Now, this is my side of the case. You're all set, remember? Mm-hmm. We're a study group. We all work together, remember? <laughs> <laughs> See ya. Yeah. Charles. Margaret, toiling in the vineyards of the law this afternoon? Mrs. Nottingham told me I'd find you here. Can we sit down? Urgent? You're Mr. Hart. Call for an appointment. I'm seeing him in a half an hour. I told you, that's a very tenacious study group. He has come up with something, Charles. I can tell by his voice. I wouldn't be surprised. Let's hope it's not too embarrassing. And if it is? My whole life doesn't really depend on what my students think of me. That's not true, Charles, and you know it isn't. Either I deserve their respect or I don't. What will you say to him? Among the things you taught me, I cannot lie. I'm sure you do what is right. I have complete confidence. Charles. Thank you for telling me. And don't keep Mr. Hart waiting. And about two and a half years after Professor Kingsfield lost the case, he was appointed to the board of directors of the Lowestone Company. I don't like your implication. You said it was your first case. Didn't you ever wonder why he never appealed? It was hardly my place to question him. I was only a clerk. I simply asked if you ever wondered. Mr. Hart, I am not on the witness stand, and you are not the prosecuting attorney. So unless there's something else you want to talk about... Uh, yes, I'd like to talk about the Richter Scholarships. Uh, they were established by Lodestone a few months after Professor Kingsfield was appointed to the board. Lodestone made many grants in many names. Yes, but for a... Well, a very little man who wasn't known for anything except an invention, which he couldn't patent. I don't see your connection. What has this got to do with Charles Kingsfield? I was hoping you could tell me. What? that he was bought by the company or a Richter? If you know that. I don't know anything of the kind. And I'm very busy, Mr. Hart, so if you have anything else... No, Mrs. Peters, I... 
Thank you for your time. I won't bother you again. Mr. Hart, I think you know this. But whatever you may surmise, it has nothing to do with the basis for an appeal. But it has everything to do with the nature of this assignment. You see, we found precedent for appeal, and we're just students. I mean, won't people wonder why Professor Kingsfield didn't even try? Mr. Hart, if this is just an assignment for the class, is it all that important to win? Yes. Goes along with what he wants to see in this case. Ethics and morality. Tomorrow's the big day, Hart. Do we go ahead or don't we? Go ahead. Did you get anything on Mrs. Peters? She's a great lawyer. Ducked every question. Hey, this place is getting classy. Mrs. Peters. Can we talk? Privately. Sure. Ernie? I need to borrow your office for a minute, okay? Borrow my office? You're supposed to be... And thanks. What's my name? What? I'm Ernie, right? And this is my tavern, right? Then why do I feel like I'm working for Hart, eh? I don't feel very good about this. I'm breaking a long-standing promise. I don't understand. Charles intended filing for an appeal. He knew he could have won, but he refused to go on. He deliberately violated the sacred client-attorney relationship. But that was... Unethical? Yeah. <laughs> In the strictest legal meaning, still... There are other meanings. You see, during his preparation, Charles discovered that Winters had stolen the invention. From Richter. He told Winters the firm could no longer represent him, and if Winters found another attorney, he'd bring charges. Why, of course. Winters didn't. But what about Richter? Richter died, never knowing his invention had been used. Well, of course. That's how Winters was able to file for the patent. He must have had some family, somebody. No one. He was a war refugee from Europe. Charles tried. He never did find a single survivor. But people still benefit from those scholarships. Young people who needed help, who still need help. And Charlie did that. What would you have done? And in conclusion, Your Honor, while it is true that an artist or inventor can have a so-called inspirational flash, in this particular instance, and as our technical experts have testified, the complexity of the device indicates that Mr. Winters could not have developed it sufficiently to apply for a patent within 60 days after his dismissal from the company. He must have done the necessary research while under the employ of Lodestone. That being the case, Your Honor, we believe your ruling should reaffirm Lodestone's right to the patent. Thank you. My compliments, Mr. Ford. Your argument was no less effective than the original. Mr. Hart, we will hear your rebuttal. If it please, Your Honor, my opponent has brought up the concept of time. I would like to remind him in the court that uh, with the invention of the wheel did not go the rights of the automobile. Edison's invention of the motion picture camera was the result of... Mr. Hart, if I may interrupt. Sir? You are merely paraphrasing the closing argument presented in the original case. Yes, sir. It was clearly insufficiently persuasive at the time, and I see no reason to waste the time of the class listening to it again. Yes, sir. I trust you will now present sufficiently new material to warrant this appeal. I'll try, sir. It's in the form of a parable. A knight in armor. A man of conscience. A man of the highest ethics and morality is confronted with a problem. He fights to help the lord of a manor, keep him from being robbed of a golden chalice. Then he learns the lord has stolen the chalice from someone else. What does he do? 
Does he allow his lord to remain in illegal possession of it, or give it to the forces trying to take it now, or does he return it to its rightful owner? Remember, he is first and foremost a knight, duty-bound to his lord. Well, he then discovers that the rightful owner is deceased, so what does he do? I presume you intend to tell us, Mr. Hart. Yes, sir. He put the chalice in the poor box at the church, and no one ever discovered how it got there, or why it got there, or who put it there. Very entertaining, Mr. Hart. But you must know by now that a fairy tale, no matter how charming, does not constitute the basis for an appeal. Uh, but, sir, isn't it possible that a lawyer, though he has all the legal tools at his disposal, isn't always required to use those tools? For example, if he feels there's a, a higher, more ethical question involved. There is no basis in law for that conclusion. But, sir, I'm talking about morality. Morality is a private matter between an individual lawyer and his conscience. Can you offer us anything more substantive? No, sir, I can't. The appeal is denied. Next. Mr. Wharton and Miss Granby, Royalton versus the Marshal Company. I say, Kingsfield's right. I mean, it's a great story, but uh, what does it prove? <laughs> I was just trying to pull the old frazzle vassal. Well, you did a great job, Hart. Well, it sure didn't help our grade. <laughs> oh, they will lighten up. <laughs> See you later. See ya. Hey, Hart. I think I can make a pretty educated guess. Don't. So long as you're satisfied now. I am. Good enough for me. See ya. Jeez. 